Hello and welcome back to AATV. I'm your host Tom Anvil Hibbard and today we're going to talk about budget battle milsim loadouts. If you're new to Airsoft you could be forgiven for thinking that you need thousands of pounds worth of kit in order to do a really good loadout at a milsim. Today we're going to talk about a loadout which won't cost you that. In fact, it won't even cost you as much as this pouch on this plate carrier. Okay, so what we're talking about today is the British 45 Commando in Op Chikana, Afghanistan 2002 and just how easy and budget friendly it can be to put together. So we've got a whole pile of what my partner would call manky green surplus mainly bought from our local army surplus store, Anchor Supplies. So what we're going to do is take you through layer by layer and show you the real basics of what you need to get and then maybe some extras on top as well. So to start off with, what we're not really going to worry about is PPE. So your gloves, your eyes and your boots. So your eye pro is up to you. Personally, I'm never really that fussed about what boots I wear at a battle sim or a mill sim or a theme game as long as they don't break the immersion. So I'm not going to wear some really bright orange metal cross running shoes, but I am going to wear a nice sensible pair of black leather boots. And actually for this period, these are absolutely fine. So we're not going to include the cost of the boots and your eye pro and your gloves in any of this. So this is our first layer, British Desert DPM. I've actually got two different types on. So my trousers, have the Canadian style slotted button. These were used in Gulf War II, actually issued as part of Combat 95. My shirt, Gulf War I era, with the more traditional sewed buttons. You can see they're slightly different in colour, but they're basically a variation on the tropical uniform of the time, which is in the more traditional bright DPM colours. You can pick these up, pretty cheap. They're getting more expensive, particularly the trousers. They were quite liked by builders and workmen because they're really light, tough, and they keep you cool on the job. So it's actually quite difficult to find some of this stuff in immaculate super grade condition. And we've just done a small repair on this pocket. But you'll find soldier's kit has that anyway. So it adds a degree of authenticity to it. For our next layer, I've got a Combat 95 windproof smock in traditional British DPM. Actually a super fantastic hard wearing garment. Really, really useful. And if you look at pictures from the time, a lot of the guys were wearing DPM smocks whilst on ops. I've actually worn desert bottoms and DPM tops quite a lot. And I played a couple of games in it last year. And actually, even in British woodland, the lighter colour trousers and the darker colour top really help blend you in. Works brilliantly. And you've got four big pockets, Velcro patches. This is a slightly later version. And these two chest pockets. So plenty of carrying capability. This one is actually RAF regiment uh, training. It's not IRR treated and I got it for about 10 quid. So if we weren't to buy a shirt and just went for the smock and trousers, you're probably still looking at 20, 25 pounds for these two items. So if we look at photos from Op Chicana, we see photos of guys with both DPM and desert DPM hats. This one is a custom sewn one with a shallower brim. My good friends would probably tell me that it's really stupid to cut down the brim on something which is supposed to protect your eyes from the sun and the rain. But there you go, these ones are much more rally. Again, this item, if you buy a surplus one, a matter of pounds, this one was only seven quid and it's brand new. Okay, so for the last item in our budget setup, we've got this British Army issue chest rig in DPM. This was about 12 pounds from Anchor Supplies and it will carry everything you'll need for 12 hours without any issue whatsoever. You've got up to nine mag pouches. You've got these two big side pouches, take a water bottle, a bit of food, spare BBs. And you've also got a mat pouch in here as well to put more stuff in, keep all your mission essential documents. Brilliant, if you want any more, you can always put a little day sack over the top. I've got the straps on this all taped up to fit me and often if you buy one they'll come all taped up by the soldier that originally had them anyway. So this loadout, hat, smock, trousers, chest rig, under 50 quid. So as we said, less than one of the pouches on my ridiculously expensive plate carrier. So let's go on and cover some additional items you could maybe add at a later date or if you had a bit more funds available. 
Okay, so some things you can add to your loadout are armor. I've got a set of ECBA and a Mark VI helmet here. The ECBA was normally worn under the smock, so you might see guys like this with a desert shirt with the armor on. However, when they're wearing their smock, you'll see the smock over the top of this. That's for two reasons. When you're wearing this armor, obviously I can't get to my pockets and British Army smocks are usually absolutely full of stuff that you want to get to whilst you're operating. The other reason is blast protection. So if you get hit by an IED or an explosive device, because your smock's so full of stuff, you don't want that being driven into your body. Obviously not so much for case in airsoft, but we want to get the right look. So this is a Mark VI Kevlar helmet with a Desert DPM cover, and this was the, the Desert DPM cover was the one most often seen on Opticana. There were guys with the green DPM covers, but this is the one you'll most likely see in the photos. They also, at that time, didn't seem to scrim the helmets very much. So this is a bit pretty much good to go. So whilst wearing armor might seem like a bit of a faff and extra weight, one, it looks the part, and two, in some games there's a rule set which gives you extra hits or bandages or wounds if you're wearing body armor, and another one if you're wearing a helmet. So it can have gameplay reasons too. Okay, so the rifle used at the time by the British Army was the L85A2, and this is what you mostly see the guys deployed with. There are numerous examples of L85s on the market. This is obviously gonna be the most expensive item that you will buy if you want to do this loadout. Most Milsim operators won't require you to have the exact weapon, but it's a really nice addition if you want to. As we said, there are various models from different manufacturers, and I highly recommend you watch the live stream, if you want one of these, by English Kiwi and Thin Brown Line, and they go over the pros and cons of each model and electric or gas. If you want a bit of load carrying capability, you might want to consider webbing rather than a chess rig. This one is a custom set I again picked up from an army surplus store for under 30 quid absolute bargain this would have cost a fortune when the guy that originally commissioned it bought it and all the pouches are sewn onto a common padded belt to make it really comfy to wear so here we go everything put together helmet webbing clothes armor rifle fantastic looking loadout i really like it i'm really looking forward to using it later in the year thanks for watching i've been tom from aatv if you want to help support the project and keep us as independent as possible, you can join our Patreon scheme. If you want to buy one of our Wicked t-shirts, there's a link down in the description. Thanks for watching. Most importantly, stay safe and we'll see you soon.